Hello, welcome to today's home designer demonstration. My name is Danielle and I will be presenting for you today. In this demonstration, I will cover the fundamental roof tools available in home designer software. We have a few different home designer programs. I will be working in home designer architectural, but most of what we do will apply to home designer suite and everything will apply in home designer professional. We will begin by going through the roof tools and building a roof using the build roof dialog box and through controlling the walls. We will then design various different roof styles and apply the concepts to a sample plan. Here we are in Home Designer software. At the top of the screen, we have various tools for controlling our design. There are different tools for walls, doors, windows, cabinets, roofs, and so forth. For this demonstration, we will mainly focus on the roof tools. These tools in the toolbar are considered parent tools. If we click on a tool, a set of child tools will appear, allowing us to further customize our design. These same tools can also be accessed by going up to Build and selecting the Parent tool and then the appropriate Child tool. If you click Help, Launch Help, the Help viewer will appear and it automatically updates to show the Help topic for the highlighted object, tool, or dialog. Dynamic help updates can be toggled on or off using the push pin. Selecting this will prevent help from updating dynamically. Let's start by drawing a simple structure. I will use the straight exterior wall tool and I will click and drag where I want the wall to go and continue designing until I have four walls connected. Next, let's dimension the structure. If I want this dimension to be 30 feet, either this top wall or this bottom wall will have to move to account for the change in space. I will select the wall I want to move, select the dimension I want to change, type in the new dimension, and press enter. We push that wall down and now the dimension is 30 feet. I would like to change the size of the top and bottom walls. The left or the right wall will have to move to account for the change in space. I will select the right wall, select the dimension that I want to change, type in the new size of 40 feet and press enter. And now we have our 30 by 40 foot structure. We can go into our 3D view by clicking the 3D camera selecting Perspective Full Overview. You can see the design we have created. We can also view the 3D view and 2D floor plan at the same time by grabbing the Perspective Full Overview tab and pulling it off to the side. You can access this same command by clicking on Window Tile Vertically or by selecting Shift F6 on your keyboard. I will make this floor plan bigger by clicking in the canvas and scrolling in with the mouse's scroll wheel and panning over by holding the scroll wheel down until we have it centered on our screen. I would like to point out that once we have all four walls connected, the program produces a roof, foundation, and dimension lines. This is because we have auto rebuild roofs, foundations, and exterior dimensions turned on in the program's default settings, but they can be turned off at any time. Now I would like to go over the build roof dialog box. Go up to the roof tool and select build roof, or it could be accessed by clicking on build roof, build roof, or by selecting Control R on your keyboard. Within the Build Roof dialog box, we have the roof panel and we have the option for build. This first checkbox is Auto Rebuild Roofs. When you have this turned on, any changes made to the wall placement, floor height, ceiling height, or roof directives and walls, the roof will automatically update to meet these changes. If you do not want the roof to update, uncheck this box. When ignore top floor is unchecked, the roof will build so it bears on the walls of the top floor of the plan. When you have this checked, the roof will build so it bears on the walls below the top floor in the plan. Next, we have the pitch. This is how steep the roof is. It will be the rise over run, so for however many inches we rise, which is specified in this box, it will run one foot, which is the left to right horizontal.
To better understand this, here is a simple pitch chart. This is your run, which will be from left to right, and in this example, it is 12 inches. You can see that we rise every inch, and the pitch of this angle becomes steeper and steeper. The same concept applies to the software. The greater the value that is plugged into the pitch, the steeper the roof will be. Next, we have the eave and gable overhang. The eave overhang is how much the roof will overhang the walls, and the gable overhang is how far the roof will overhang on the gable walls. We have a help option in the bottom right corner, which gives us more information on all of these options. This pulls up the same menu that I mentioned earlier. I skipped the minimum alcove, so let's look that up in the help menu. The dynamic help automatically brought us to the roof panel section and we can read that the minimum alcove size is the minimum depression size needed into a wall for the roof planes to continue building by following the walls. In this example, the minimum alcove size is 36 inches, and it is reflected in the walls, so the roof planes continue by following the walls. In the example on the right, the minimum alcove size is not met, so the roof planes continue building over the main wall. Let's close out of the help menu, and under the materials panel, we can change the materials used for different options of the roof. Under the roof styles, we can choose one of these roof styles and gain more information and instructions on building each style. We will cover how to build all of these styles today. I'll cancel out of this. Let's take a look at how we can control the roof through the walls. I will double click this wall to open up the wall specifications. In the roof panel, we have these various roof options that automatically generate these various roof types. The pitch options are where you can control a single roof plane's pitch, separately from the rest of the plan. If you want a roof plane to have multiple pitches, you can click the upper pitch option and specify what the upper pitch is, the starting height in the plan, and how far it is in from the baseline. The next option is overhang length, and this is how we can control how far the roof planes are overhanging a single wall independently of the other walls. The last option is auto roof return. With this selected, it will build a small roof plane along the wall between the roof planes. You can specify the length of the return between the two walls, how far it will extend, the roof type, and the slope. Let's create a gable roof. I selected the wall that I want the gable roof to build over and already have the wall specification open. Under the roof options, I will check full gable wall and click OK. It will create a gable roof style with the ridge centered above the selected wall. In our 3D view, you can see this and automatically built that gable roof style. If we go back into the floor plan view, you can select the other wall and we can change it to full gable wall with the shortcut in the bottom toolbar. On the other side in our 3D view, you can see the program automatically created it. We also have a gable roof line feature if you are using home designer, architectural, or professional. To use this, I will click on Build, Roof, Gable Roof Line, and click and drag where you want the gable roof along our wall. If you zoom in, you can select the line and drag it out. I'll open up the specifications and you can set the pitch, overhang, how long you want the line, the angle, the X and Y positions, the line style, and we can also include an arrow. You can automatically create a Dutch gable roof that generates a gable on hip roof over a wall. We are starting with the 30 by 40 structure with the automatic hip roof. You will open the wall specification on the wall that you want the Dutch gable to build over and in the roof panel, select Dutch gable wall. You can change the pitch, start at height, 
and in from baseline. Our baseline is the exterior edge of our wall's main layer. Along the outside edge of the framing layer to the top of the rafter is where the baseline is. When we say in from baseline 60 inches, it means we are going inward 60 inches from this point before the change in pitch occurs. I will leave everything as it is for this example and you can see that update in 3D. To create a shed roof, we will start with the two parallel walls being marked as a full gable. In our plan, we already have these specified. Next, we will specify this perpendicular wall as a high shed wall. I'll select this wall by double clicking on it and open its specifications and under the roof panel and select high shed gable wall and then press OK. In the 3D view, you can see it built the high shed wall. Next, let's adjust the pitch to something more realistic. I'll double click this opposite wall to open up its specifications and go to the roof panel and change the pitch to 3. The roof automatically rebuilt and now we have something that is a little bit more realistic. Now let's build a salt box roof. I will start with a 30 by 40 foot structure with a hip roof. We will start by building a second floor. Click build, floor, build new floor. You can also click Shift X6 on your keyboard for the shortcut. A question will appear and it asks us if we want to build the second floor. We can derive our second floor from the first floor plan or we can have a blank screen to draw out the second floor. I am going to derive our second floor from the first floor and click OK. The Floor to Default dialog will appear and ask us if we want to adjust the height information. For this example, everything is set how we need it, so I will click OK. In our 3D view, you can see how the second floor was instantly built. Over in the floor plan, you can see what floor you are on, and this is reflected up in the toolbar. We are currently on the first floor. If we want to go up to the second floor, you can click this up arrow. And if you want to go back down to the first floor, you can click the down option. First, we need to make the two parallel ends have gable walls on the first and second floor. I will multi-select these walls by holding down my shift key on the keyboard while selecting both of the walls, and then release the shift button on my keyboard once they are both selected, and then select the gable wall in the bottom toolbar. And I'll do the same thing on the second floor. In our 3D view, I want to change our rendering technique to glass house, and this allows us to see through the walls and other objects in our design. Back in the floor plan, let's click and drag this wall in. The program has created a roof on the second and the first floor. We can go down to the first floor and you can see this green dashed line where the roof plane is coming in. I'll go back up to the second floor and I want to change this wall to a knee wall. And this tells the roof planes to build over the wall and take the roof plane and build it up to meet the ridge on the second floor. I will select the wall and double click to open up the wall specification. I'll go to the roof panel and under the roof options, check knee wall, and then click OK. The program instantly updated the roof planes. Now the roof on the first floor meets with the roof plane on the second floor at the ridge. In the 3D view, you will notice that we have this angled wall, and it's reflected with this dashed line. This is telling us where the ceiling plane cuts at an angle through the room. To change the walls so they meet at a 90 degree angle, select the wall and drag it in until it meets the dashed line. Now we no longer have that sloped wall. The last roof option is Extend Slope Downward. When this is selected on a bumped out section of the structure, the program will continue making roof planes over the walls until they meet any overhang requirements. In this left example, without any of the walls being specified as full gable walls or to extend the slope downward, the program will build the hip wall around the structure. In the photo on the right, the two walls on the bump out are specified as full gable walls, and the perpendicular wall is specified specified to extend slope downwards. The slope continues off of the hip until it reaches the overhang requirement on this wall.
The next roof style is a gambrel roof. We will be starting with the 30 by 40 foot structure. We will start with two walls being marked as full gable. In our plan, we already have these specified. I will open these parallel walls and in the wall specifications, I'll go to the roof panel and under the pitch options, specify the pitch to be 24 inches. Check upper pitch and it's already set to the six inches that we'd like, and then the in from baseline, which is the starting distance. We can tell the program how far in from that baseline we want the upper pitch to start building, and for this example, we'll set it to 60 inches and click OK. Next, let's make a goal wing roof. I am picking up right where we left off when we created the gambrel roof. I am going to select this lower and upper wall, click to open up the specifications. In the roof panel, I'll go to the pitch options, and I will change the pitch to 6 inches, and the in from baseline distance will automatically update, and the software did the math for us, but you can manually adjust this as needed. I'll adjust the upper pitch to 12 inches, and manually adjust the in from baseline to 60 inches, and then click OK. The next roof style is a half hip roof. We are starting with the 30 by 40 structure. We will start with the two parallel walls being marked as full gable. In our plan, we already have these specified. I will multi-select these two end walls and open up their specification, and I will adjust the upper pitch. I'll click upper pitch, and I will change it to four, and then change the starting height to be 185 inches and click OK. And you can see how those adjustments have been made in 3D. The next roof we will create is a mansard roof. We are starting with the same 30 by 40 structure with the default hip roof. We will adjust each of these walls to have an upper and lower pitch. I will select my first wall, open up its specifications, and go to the roof options. And I'll change the pitch to something steeper, 24. And I'll change the upper pitch and change it to something more shallow one quarter of an inch, and then I'll specify the in from baseline to be 60 inches and click OK. And I'll continue to do this for each of the other three walls. Next, let's create an A-frame roof. We will start by using the 30 by 40 structure with the default hip roof. We will begin by making these two parallel walls full gable. The next step is to make a second floor. I'll click Build Floor, Build New Floor, or Shift X is the shortcut on the keyboard. This dialog box is going to ask us how we want to build the second floor. For this example, we will derive the new floor from the first floor and click OK. Next, we can adjust the floor to default information. I will click OK to show you how this builds. It creates a second floor on top of the first floor. The auto rebuild roofs adjusted and now we are building the second floor. Now let's adjust the pitch of the gable to make it an A-frame roof. I'll click Build, Roof, Build Roof, and I'll change the pitch to 22 and click OK. I will turn on the glass house view and I'll click the rendering techniques and select glass house. This gives us a better idea of where the floor and the ceilings are located through the walls. You can see the foundation, the first floor, the second floor, and the large attic space. 
We will need to change this and have the roof plane build lower to the ground and cut through the second floor structure to create the A-frame roof. I will click Control R on my keyboard to bring up the Build Roof dialog box option and I'm going to check ignore top floor which will ignore the second floor and the roof plane will cut through the second floor and build on the first floor. Notice that these dashed lines are here and these are showing where the slope of the roof plane is meeting the ceiling. If you want the roof plane brought down even further like in this image, we can do this by changing the first floor ceiling height. We will go down to the first floor and I will double click inside of the room to open up its specifications to bring the roof roof planes down even further. In the structure panel, I'll change the rough ceiling to 6, press tab and see how it updates, and then click OK. This changed the ceiling height to be very small and dropped the roof plane significantly. And now the roof planes are where we want them. We will turn off the auto rebuild roof and leave the roofs as they are. And then we can readjust the ceiling height. I'll click Control R on my keyboard to bring up the roof dialog box again, and I'll uncheck auto rebuild roof and click OK. We will readjust the first floor ceiling height by double clicking inside of the room to open up the specifications and go to the structure panel. And I'll check this wrench to change the height back to the default option and click OK. That restores the default ceiling height, but now the walls are building outside of the structure on the second floor. This is because we have walls on the second floor that are placed outside of where the roof plane slopes into the second floor. To adjust this in the floor plan, we can go up to the second floor and see that these dashed lines represent where the slope of the roof plane meets the ceiling, but we can't see where the slope of the roof meets the floor. We'll need to turn on the reference display to do this. Click Tools, Floor Reference Display, Reference Display. This red line indicates where the slope of the roof plane is meeting the floor. We will select the wall and drag it until it's above that line, and we will do this on the other wall. We can turn off the reference display once we have the walls positioned how we want. On the second floor, if you want to build it to the ridge, you can open up the room and in the structure panel, uncheck flat ceiling over this room and click OK. Now the second floor builds through the attic and the ceiling goes all the way to the ridge. In some cases, you might want to make this area into a loft. So you can take the railing tool, select straight railing and drag where you want the loft space to be. Then you can open up the unused space and make the room type open to below. You will see that our railing tool is still selected. To deselect this, I will click the space bar on my keyboard or you can access the same command in the toolbar. I'll open the room and change the room type to open below And in the structure panel, I'll uncheck flat ceiling over this room and click OK. And that updates the ceiling area and it builds all the way to the ridge. The next roof style is a one and a half story roof. We are starting with the 30 by 40 structure and the default hip roof. The first step is to create a second floor. I'll click build, floor, build new floor. We will be asked how we want to build this floor and we will derive the second floor plan from the first and click OK. All of the floor two defaults will appear and I will leave them as they are and click OK. Next, we'll change this hip roof to a gable. I'll select these two end walls and mark them as full gable walls. I now want to change this rendering technique to see the ceilings and the floors that are being built. We will adjust it from the standard render to the glass house. There are a few different ways to create your one and a half story roof. If the design doesn't require attic space, you can remove the ceiling from the second floor and have the roof build on the first floor. I'll go into the floor plan to do this. On the second floor, I'll open up the room specifications and in the structure panel, I'll uncheck flat ceiling over this room. Next, we want the roof planes to build on top of the first floor, ignoring the second floor. I will click Build, Roof, Build Roof, and check Ignore Top Floor. 
The program is now ignoring the second floor when building the roof. Notice that the roof is building with a hip roof style. This is because the walls on the first floor are still marked as hip walls. I'll change these walls on the first floor to gable walls. And now we have the one and a half story structure with a roof over it. The design might require the second floor to have a few feet of wall before the roof starts sloping inward. And to do this, I'll undo some of the things that we just did. So I'll click build, roof, build roof and uncheck ignore top floor. Now the roof is building on top of the second story again. We will create the attic space, go to the second floor and double click inside of the room and in the structure panel, check flat ceiling over this room and that creates the attic space. Now to make the roof build over just a small portion of the walls, on the second floor we will adjust the rough ceiling height. I'll double click inside of the room and under the structure panel I will adjust the rough ceiling height to be 24 inches and this can be changed to whatever your particular plan requires. You can also change the finished ceiling height, but for this example, I will do the rough ceiling height and click OK. You can see that update. If this is all your design requires, you can now uncheck auto rebuild roofs so the roof doesn't adjust, and this is going to ensure they don't move when you change your wall or your ceiling height. I'll click build, roof, build roof, and uncheck auto rebuild roof and then click OK. Now we want to adjust the ceiling height so it's at a normal level. I'll open up the room specifications and go to the structure panel and I'll select the default rough ceiling height and uncheck the flat ceiling over the room if you don't want any attic space. Next, we will cover how to create a dormer. I've turned back on the auto rebuild roof setting and marked the two end walls as gable walls, which builds a gable roof over each end of the house. My rendering technique is currently glass house view and this lets us look at how the walls and roof are being built inside of the structure. For this example, it will be nice to see everything we do not only from the glass house view, but from the standard view as well. I'll click on the 3D camera perspective full overview and I will pull this down so we can see both views at the same time. Now I can go over to the roof tools, select the dormer, and I will click where I want the center front of the dormer to be placed. Home Designer will automatically create the walls, roof, and window. You can see over in the glass house view how the dormer is being built into the first floor's attic. In the floor plan view, you can use the side edit handles to resize the dormer and the center handle to move the dormer across the roof from left to right or up and down. You can also adjust the dormer's position with dimensions. For this example, I will change the dimension to 17 feet 6 inches. I will click the move object option before I click enter on the keyboard. This will ensure the entire dormer moves instead of resizing it. We can double click on the dormer and open the specifications. There are several different roof styles that can be on top of the dormer. You can adjust the pitch and it can also be viewed in degrees by checking this box. The roof eave overhang and gable overhang can be adjusted and you can add a roof return over the gable end. You can check this box and adjust the length and roof return type. Going to the wall panel, you can change the wall type, height, and width. The line style can be changed here and you can specify the line style and color. Now I will demonstrate how to create a shed dormer manually. I'm starting with the 30 by 40 structure and I have the auto rebuild roof setting turned on and the two parallel walls marked as full gable walls. I'll begin by building a second floor. I'll click build, floor, build new floor. I'll derive the second floor from the first floor and click OK. All of this default information looks good and I'll click OK again. I would like to see the standard 3D render and the glass house render at the same time, so I'll click on the camera tools and I'll select perspective full overview and I'll pull that view over here and I will do the same thing for the glass house view. I'll click on my rendering techniques and select the glass house option.
Now I'd like to make a couple of knee walls here. I'll go into the wall tools and pick straight interior wall and click and drag where I want them to be placed. Now I want to make sure I have the proper space from the exterior wall. I'll click on this wall and you can see that interior dimension appear. And I'll click on the dimension that I want to change and I'll change it to 5 feet. And I'll do the same thing on the other wall. I'm now going to double click to open up these walls specifications and I'm going to change them to knee wall. A knee wall is a short wall on the upper story that is cut by a roof plane. By selecting this wall to make it a knee wall, we'll ensure that the roof cuts through the wall and continues down to the first floor. I will now create the exterior walls that are highlighted in red to finish the dormer. I will click and drag these walls where I want the dormer located. Now I will zoom in to make sure the siding is facing outward. It is because the siding is represented with the red dashed line fill. If the wall layers had to be reversed, you can select the wall. And in the bottom toolbar, there's an option for reverse layers. And this reorders the layers so the siding is facing in the correct direction. But I'll leave everything how it is since they are facing the correct direction. And now I'm going to dimension these walls with the interior dimension. I'll select the wall and then the dimension that I want to change. And I'll change it to one foot on this side. And then I'll repeat this all the way around. I would like to clean up the floor plan view and turn off the dimensions. So I'll click Tools, Display Options, and uncheck Dimensions Manual. Next, I'm going to delete this section of the interior wall by putting a break in it since we no longer need it. I will select the break wall tool and place the break where I want them on the wall and it's going to be where the interior wall meets this exterior wall. I'll click the space bar on my keyboard and then I'll select this wall section again and place another break. Notice that this wall is no longer connected to the other interior wall section. I'll press delete on my keyboard and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now, this space between the two exterior walls needs to be an attic, so the program's automatic roof generator will ignore this area. I will double click inside of the room to open up the specifications, and under the general panel, I will change the room type to an attic. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Next, I will mark these as full gable walls. This front wall section needs to be opened up so we can specify the pitch to be less than the pitch throughout the rest of the design. I'll change this to be 4 and press OK. I would like to adjust the main roof to be a steeper pitch, so I'll open up the Build Roof dialog and adjust the pitch to be steeper at 12. You can see those updates in 3D. This gap in the wall is appearing because the dormer's sidewalls are not extending back far enough, so I will bring back this interior wall.
Each plan is going to be different. Your dormer might have different design requirements than the dormer we just created. You can take these concepts that we reviewed and apply them and make adjustments to achieve your desired look. Now let's take these concepts and apply them to a sample plan. We have this plan started with the automatic hip roof style. I'll begin by changing the overall pitch of this home and I'll select build roof, build roof, and I'll change the pitch to 12 and 12 and click OK. Next, we will update these four areas to be full gables. I will select the first wall and mark it as a full gable in the bottom toolbar and then I'll do the same thing on these remaining walls. I'll go down to the first floor and update the deck to have a gable roof. I'll go down to my first floor and update the deck to have two gable roof ends. Over on this side of the house, we currently have a straight gable roof going all the way down, but I'd like to change it to have something similar to a gull wing. It will have a shallow pitch over the deck followed by a steep pitch over the remaining portion of the house up to the ridge. I'll select the wall that we're adjusting. I'll go over to the roof options and change the pitch to 4. And I'll change the upper pitch to 8. And update the in from baseline to 78 inches and click OK. Next, I will build a roof return. I'll go back up to the second floor and open the wall specification by double clicking the wall and under the roof options, click auto roof return. I will set the length to be five feet. I will leave the roof type as gable and the slope as sloping and press OK. And you can see those changes in the 3D view. The last thing that we will add is the dormers. In the floor plan view, in the roof tools, I will select the dormer tool and click where I want the center front of the dormer to be placed. I'll double click to open the dormer specification and change the roof style to shed. I'll center this with the center object tool down in the bottom toolbar and I will hover over the room I want it centered over and click once I find that center. And I will adjust this dimension to 4 feet 10 inches. Then I will make two copies of this. I will click the copy paste option, select sticky mode, and then make the two copies and again adjust their placement with dimensions. I will click the Move Object option before I click Enter on the keyboard, and this will ensure the entire dormer moves instead of resizing it. And now our roof is exactly how we'd like it. We offer a free trial version and a 30-day satisfaction guarantee. If you are using an older version of the software, we offer upgrade discounts. Our other training videos and knowledge base articles are a great place to increase your home designer knowledge. And you can find those on the website homedesignersoftware.com. If you want to connect with other home designer users, check out our Home Talk user forum. If you have any questions or need help choosing a program, give us a call at 208-292. Thank you for attending this demonstration and have a great day.